Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, this one's going to be a bit of a quick one because I uh, am a little bit sick and I don't want to burn myself out because next week's going to be a real big week. Uh, we are moving in. I'm happy to announce to the brand new Luke and Lewis studio. Uh, it's huge. I can't, I'm not going to say who we've partnered with to make this possible, uh, but you could probably guess it if you look at some of the clues that are around unless... Uh, you're stupid uh, or you don't know who they are, which both are, you know, very acceptable reasons. Uh, You will have to just wait and see. Uh, The episode drops on Tuesday. Please check it out on YouTube. You'll see the brand new studio, the first ever studio we've ever had or I've ever had uh, that's not in a fucking warehouse or a garage. So that's great. I'm excited for that. Tickets to my comedy festival shows are on sale now. First Saturday sold out. The first Friday is uh, following very swiftly. And uh, you can get tickets at loosebeers.com. This fucking mic is going to be the death of me, but uh, it's what I have to deal with until uh, I get this set up now because now that Luke and Lewis is out of here, i got to set up this shit. Dude, Luke and Lewis being in here was supposed to be temporary and then it just went on for a fucking year. <clears throat> um, so it just kind of ruined my life and I'm really happy that the boys are out of here because now... I can be selfish with my little garage and finally admit that it is a garage, but I will be converting it into a Spears only studio. You know, like my, like my bedroom, it'll be only used for two things, not sleeping or fucking, just filming and editing. That's it. Filming and editing only. Not, no sleeping, definitely no fucking, Keelan, if you're listening. Uh, but mainly just recording and filming and releasing. Uh, so I'm excited about that. It's going to be a huge week. We've been literally l- working on this behind the scenes in secret for months and months and months, uh, as as I am wont to do, as I tend to do, and I'm excited to finally reveal it. We recorded the first Luke and Lewis episode in the new studio um, a little bit early because of the public holiday, and we wanted to make sure that everything was perfect and the release of it went smoothly. And woo, it is a banger episode. Um, and, uh, I, I think that hopefully the people we've partnered with, uh, will listen to it and go, <clears throat> ah, yes, we have not made a terrible mistake because otherwise they'll listen to it and go, uh, why, why did we give these guys a studio if they're going to do this with it? So we'll see as you guys know what I like to do, walk the tightrope and every now and then you need to do that even with the people who are graciously giving you incredible opportunities. So <clears throat> that is, um coming out uh soon i'm dude i'm i'm excited for for all of that shit i'm so glad that there's a long weekend for, for whatever reason i don't know if anyone else is like this but whenever my body works out that there's going to be a little bit of a break coming up they're like and we can be sick now you know because until the, uh, when there's no break in sight i'll be redlining it for months i'll be just going all the way fucking to the max working as hard as I can, and then as soon as my body works out that there's a long weekend, or maybe the tour's finishing, or I've got a little break between shows here, it'll be like, and now we have COVID. Now we have time for COVID. I don't have COVID. I've got a, just a fucking little coldy, fluey thing um, with a dry cough, and every time I cough, I say Wuhan, and, and I ate a bat earlier in the week. I, but it's not COVID. I don't have any of the symptoms, um, except for most of them. Um, but uh, that's all right. I'll be going out trampolining. Uh, and licking the walls. No, I'm fine. I don't have it. I've just got a regular boring cold, which is really boring, isn't it? You know? Fuck, imagine if I had COVID. The views would rock it. I could describe my symptoms. I could tell you how, how all it, it... It's all fake, you know? I'm getting, I'm getting micro... As soon as I got COVID, I'm getting microchipped by Bill Gates. Now I can recite the source code to Windows 10 by heart. Didn't even know that I had that in me. I'm an Apple guy. You know, I use Apple, but inside me is Windows 10, the source code. It was injected into my brain. No, guys, COVID's real. It's just not really here, is it? At the moment. I haven't had cases for ages, which I'm very excited about. Um, and uh, look, this microphone is pissing me off so much. Hang on. Is there anything I can do about that without tipping the table over? Probably not. If this episode sounds a little bit weird, it is because I'm using a gear that I'm not used to using. That's better. That's much better. Yeah, I'm not used to using this stuff because uh, all of the Luke and Lewis shit is now in the new Luke and Lewis studio. But whatever. Guys, it's time to talk about something um, that I'm sure you're very interested to hear more about. 
because, and I think it's something that no one on the internet has talked about, and that is NFTs. I think that NFTs are fucking sick, and I'm going to tell you why. If you, if you, for the uninitiated, NFTs, and I'm not going, I'm not here to fucking sell you something. I just think that it's fascinating, and it's something that I really care about, and I think it's fucking cool. If you don't know, NFTs uh, is a is a non fungible token, and what it is is it's another way for obscenely rich people to avoid tax. Uh, and I am so for that. It's a way for obscenely rich people to, to look the tax man in the eye and go, oh, I didn't make any money. Sorry. All I have are these fucking non-fungible tokens of art that I bought. Would you like to, a piece of that? And the government goes, can we spend it? And rich man goes, well, you can't. I could, but you can't. And then the government goes, oh, well, all right. Fuck you. Don't pay tax then. I guess I guess we'll send a robot army after the poor. That's that's what a non-fungible token is. It's it's another way for rich people to completely uh, just avoid tax, and I'm all for it. I love it because the artist benefits. Now, what it is, it's a non-fungible token. So, in simplest in the simplest terms, I can describe it as it's just a way to buy digital art and confirm ownership. Now, a lot of people would be like, oh, why would you buy something if you can just download it for free? Why would I buy a JPEG? Why would you buy anything? Huh? All these all these people are going, oh, why would you buy a JPEG? I could just download it for free. You've never bought a shoe that you didn't need? Why would you buy a t-shirt with a logo on it where you can get one made in a sweatshop for 60 cents from Kmart? Because... That's why, because, because it's cool, because we've, we've assigned value to it. Is it fake? Yes. Is it imaginary? Absolutely. Does that mean anything? Has that ever mean to any, meant, meant anything at all? Oh, why would I spend money on a, on a digital file I can download for free? I don't know, bro. Why would you assign value to paper? Why would you care about money? Why does anyone care about anything other than picking berries and fucking? Because the answer is because. Why is it valuable? Uh, because it is. Because he wants to buy it for ten thousand dollars after I've bought it for one thousand dollars. That's why, dumbass. You want me to? You want me to fucking explain economics to you? Here's here's economics to you. It's fake. We made it up. It's imaginary, but it runs the world. Fuck you. Get a job. Break your back. Die at sixty, broke and poor. Because. We said so, because we, we value things that have no value other than the value we give it. Oh, I just want to raise a family and live a good life. Boo! Get a job. Become a concreter. Inhale asbestos for money. That's what it is. Don't tell me that NFTs are stupid if you have a job. Oh, what are you doing? Why, why would I spend eight hours a day working for numbers on a screen when I can just get numbers on a screen in my app? I'll tell you why. Because we care about those numbers more than fake numbers, even though the real numbers are fake numbers. That's why, bro. That's why. All these cunts pretending they're smarter than everyone. It's, it's a dumb, invented, imaginary system that we all must abide by. So while I'm here, I'm going to scoop it up. It's all monopoly money. It's all fake. So you might as well scoop that shit up. Give me that. NFTs are basically... Do I have to explain this? Blockchain technology. What's blockchain? Imagine, right? Think of it as money. Every single dollar in the world is floating around out there, right? But imagine if every single dollar kept a record of where every other dollar in the world was, who had it, who had how many, who had it before that, since it's all the way back to when that dollar was created, it kept a, every dollar kept track of every other dollar and knew where it was so that the only way to hack and create fake dollars would be for you to own every single dollar and then implant that information onto every single dollar, which obviously would be impossible. 
That's what blockchain te technology is. No one runs it. There is no data center because every little link in the chain knows where every other link is. Basically, that's what it is. And an NFT is essentially putting a digital file onto that chain so that every single link knows when this token was created, how many were created, when it was created, who made it, who bought it, for how much, and how much it's selling for now, etc. All of the information is tracked and logged by every other piece of the chain. Impossible to hack unless you without getting every single piece of it, which obviously is impossible. That's basically what it is. It ensures that even though it is a digital file, you can own it because it just says your name. It just, put, it just puts your name on a file and you can transfer that file and someone else's name replaces yours. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds fucking useless. Yeah, bro. So does absolutely everything you spend your money on. Here's why I think it's going to change the world. People my age and older are used to buying things. I want that thing. I want to own it. I like action figures. I like comic books. Uh, I like clothes. I like sneakers. I like things, tangible things. Have you ever met a nine-year-old and gone, what do you want for your birthday? If that cunt tells you he wants a thing, that like a physical thing, he's either asking for clothes or sports equipment. Every other 10-year-old and under wants digital things. They want Fortnite skins. They want skins for their new game. They want a fucking code card for Roblox. They want this. They want that. They want digital things. Every cunt that's like 14 and under is not going to own things other than clothes and things that you need to interact with your interest. A paintbrush, uh, a ball, equipment to do a thing. Every other thing is going to be digital. I really believe that. And it's, we're already there. Think about how many times you spent money on digital shite, right? Digital shit. It's already happening. I really do think that the age of owning shit is over. And that's terrible. That's awful. Like, we don't own our music. We don't own our TV shows. We don't own our movies. And that's what corporations want because at any time they can go, ah, if you want to watch season three, you're going to need to be on the $15.99 plan a month. Oh, but I'm paying $9.99. Rules have changed, cunt. Upgrade if you want season three. $9.99 plan gets you season one and two of every show you like. You want to continue watching it, that's going to be an extra $5.99, cunt. That's where the world's going. If you really think about it, you watch and you pay attention. You don't own shit anymore. That's why I sell my comedy special. You can fucking have the file. Just don't pirate it. Don't give it out for free. You can have it. I trust you. It's five bucks. Go and get it. I trust you. And so far, that's served me well. I don't want to be one of these monthly services. But that's where it's all going. Because you think about it, right? Let's say you buy a skin in your favorite Call of Duty game. And then five years go by and that game dies. You don't really own that. It's gone. You want to fucking look at it. You're going to have to log into the dead game. Oh, they stopped supporting the servers anymore. You didn't own it. You never owned it. It wasn't yours. However, let's say your favorite game releases an NFT of your favorite gun with your favorite skin. And you fucking buy that shit. And then every cunt on the planet knows that you are one of 300 or maybe one of one people who own that gun with that skin. And then they chuck on their VR goggles, they go to your virtual home and they see that guns on your fucking virtual wall. Now, in real life, you live in a tiny little apartment and you can barely afford noodles. But in VR, you're fucking anime bitches looking at your golden gun on the wall going, I'm the man. And everyone who comes around smells virtual pussy and sees the gun and goes, that guy is cool. He's got digital taste. In real life, 
The man's starving to death. He can barely afford noodles, but in the digital realm, that guy's getting anime pussy and looking at the golden gun on his shelf and you can shoot it. And that's legal because it's in the virtual world. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's going to change everything. NFTs are going to make us start debating what is actually real. We already are. Oh, why would I buy that when I can get a digital file for free? I don't know, bro. Why would you look at the Mona Lisa when you can Google it for free? It's different. It's the real thing. And real is a concept. Why is a picture of the Mona Lisa less good than looking at it in person? Why can't I get the same feeling when I fucking look at a really good replica of the Mona Lisa as when I do when I go and see it? Because it's this imaginary concept of real and ownership and the actual thing and one of one and limited edition and all that other invented lizard brain bullshit that all these cunts have just figured out that our brain likes for whatever reason, that's what we like. And that's why NFTs are going to work. That's why NFTs are going to explode. Now, don't get me wrong. 95% of NFT projects that you see online, oh, I've I've got an NFT, I've got an NFT, they're going to be worthless, mine included. I launched a fucking NFT just to see how it would work. I accidentally made them $100. Oopsie. I thought I was making them 10 bucks. I accidentally made them 100. Whoops. Didn't sell any. Then I changed the price to 10 bucks. I sold four. Now, is that going to make you rich? Probably not, unless I die early. You never know. I might get hit by a train, dude. I might be like, you know what? I am sick of catching the train. I'd rather be in front of it. And then, bam, that NFT you own, worth a fair, I don't know, a grand maybe? From a collector who wants to own late the late Lewis Spears' first ever NFT? of his famous Real Talk series that everyone on Instagram loves and everyone on TikTok loves and everyone on Twitter loves, but everyone on Facebook fucking hates. That You might want to be that guy. You could be famous for owning that. Put on your VR goggles. What, you fucking anime pussy looking at my Real Talk on the TV? And you're the only cunt with that. It is pretty cool seeing, because uh, I, I did a Real Talk about it and I thought it would be really meta- to make the real talk about NFTs and NFT. That's really fucking cool. I thought it was a cool idea. So I set it up and I did it and I, I made like 111 editions available because, I don't know, 111, that's kind of a cool number and uh, sold five of them for 10 bucks. Uh, you can only buy it with Ethereum um, and that's cool. And then a guy bought the, the first edition, one of 111, and now he's selling it for $2,000. I hope someone buys it. Get your money, King. Fuck yeah, dude. Get your cash. I hope someone buys that. I hope, you know what? I hope so, all of you guys listen to this, buy the other hundred and start selling for 3,000. And then all of a sudden, if everyone goes, fuck this Lewis Spears guy's blown up, we got to buy it. And that's cool. And what's really cool about these NFTs is... The artist creates them and the artist owns them. For now, I mean, I'm sure that will all change when fucking record labels and management companies get their fucking grubby mittens onto it and they go, oh, we can help you create one for a small percentage, something like 80% of proceeds forever. Um, but for now, what's really cool about it and what's fucking awesome about NFTs, and I think this is what, art more, more so like visual art has been missing like i can make money i can uh I, I put out all of my shit for free but then i can make my money when i go hey i've got a show and then you you guys come and see the show physical artists that make pretty art and then post it on instagram there's no real way for those cunts to make money like really there is no way for them to make money cool they could sell an original for what fucking 10 grand if they're really successful but like someone my size, you can't really make a lot of money out of your audience. You sell a few posters, you do an art gallery, but you don't really charge entry for that. And then that's a bitch and you can't really tour it. It's very difficult for these cunts to make money. However, what's really cool about introducing the concept of ownership into the digital art realm is sure, I'm an artist. I can post a version of my art 
but I don't own that. That's not the real thing. That's just a reproduction. The real thing's on the NFT market. You can buy that for a for thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, a million, however successful these people are. And what's fucking the coolest thing about this is because the artist mints the token, minting is creating, when they mint it, they set their own rules about reselling. So reselling is fine, right? If you are Picasso and you paint some shit and then you die in a ditch unsuccessful, boo-hoo, fuck your kids. They're fucked. But then, oh, all these art collectors go, we've decided that this Picasso is the guy. He's the best artist in the world. So we're going to start selling his arts for, art for millions. Does his family get any of that? Nah. See you later, cunt. Enjoy your grave getting eaten by worms. I'm making money because I scammed the rest of the world into thinking that your art's the best when really it's kind of good. It's not bad, but it's not better than any other art I've seen, really. It's all imaginary. You're the famous artist because I was told in school that you're the famous artist. But if I was a kid and I saw your art in a magazine, I would go, oh, that's kind of cool. But you're the famous artist because the powers that be decided that you would be the guy. So they made you the guy we study. They, they made you the guy we should want to own or collect. And they made you the guy we want to see in a museum. But you don't get any of that money. The people who decided that get all the money. Here's what's cool about NFTs. When you create it, when you mint it, you can set rules that cannot be changed. They are immutable. There is no way to change these rules. They are unhackable. No way to change it. I created my NFTs and it was like, what do you want to happen when someone buys it and then sells it? And I was like, oh, that's cool. I would like 10% of that because I'm kind of the reason why that's popping and cool. So if someone buys it and resells it, they should get some money. But at the end of the day, the person buying it is probably a fan of me. And they wouldn't have found out about that without me. So I want to cut. I want to slice. So I was like, you know what? I want 10% forever. And apparently that's low. Most artists are asking for 20 or 30%, which I think is completely fair. It is their art after all. And then what happens is every single time my NFT changes hands, I will get 10% of whatever it sells for. If it sells for more, if it sells for less, if it sells for heaps, if it sells for fuck all, I get 10% of it straight, sent straight to my wallet. I don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. I don't have to communicate. They don't have to ask permission. It just fucking happens on the blockchain network because I set the rule when I created the token. So if you want the token, you've got to play by the rules I set. That is so fucking powerful that's going to change the world because i think there is such a demand for owning things you go back to my comedy special i'm selling a digital file and yet yeah, cool you own the file but people were still buying the dvd even though they don't have dvd players they wanted to fucking own it they wanted to look at it and go look at this i own it it's cool art and it looks great on your shelf but people were not buying the dvd because it's a dvd they are buying it because they wanted to fucking own something tangible. And I think NFTs is bringing that tangible feeling, which is just bullshit, really, if you think about it. Like, unless you really like the art of the DVD and you want it on your shelf, there's no real reason to own it. No one watched that shit on DVD. People just wanted to fucking support me and then have something tangible and go, I fucking contributed to a bit of history of Spears' career and I got a thing out of it. Look at my thing. The minute you apply that feeling to digital products, it's fucking over. And imagine, right, when this shit comes to music. Right now, it's just art. It's purely physical art. To my knowledge, I'm the only person who's ever done comedy with an NFT. I might, maybe, be the first comedian to make an NFT. Surely. I haven't seen anyone else mint like a video file that's funny. It's only art that I've seen. But that's fucking cool. Think about that. I'm the first comedian to make an NFT. But you wait until other shit gets involved. So already, 
there's like, I love this idea. Uh, the NBA has gotten involved, right? So obviously with trading cards, you can own a rookie card of LeBron James. And then when he becomes really successful, you can sell it. Bro, that's cool. Imagine owning a video clip of LeBron James's first ever dunk. The first time he ever scored. The first time he ever dribbled. I don't know how basketball works. I'm tall, not black. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Where a new fucking player comes into the game, you buy their first ever dunk, then they become one of the greats, and then you fucking have their, the first edition of their first score video file that you can then watch in VR, prove you have ownership of it, put on a fucking digital frame in your house that shows, oh, LeBron James' first ever dunk all the way back when, owned by Lewis Spears. That's fucking cool and powerful. Imagine that. That's already happening. But imagine this. An artist comes out, music artist, drops a mixtape, turns every single individual song into an NFT. He's a little guy. You really like him. They're a hundred bucks, 50 bucks. Fuck it. They might even be 10 like mine. You buy the lead single on their mixtape. They blow up and become the next fucking 50 cent. You held on to their first ever song that they ever released or the best song on their first mixtape. That is fucking powerful. And that's what I think we're going to see a lot of. I reckon you're going to see an artist drop an album because artists make no m money from fucking Spotify. They make nothing. It all goes to the label. And then even if it doesn't, they don't make very much money at all. It's like YouTube money. I don't, I get millions and millions and millions and millions of views online. I don't make that much money out of it. I have, I make enough money to pay Keelan. That's pretty much it. All of my money comes from Patreon, ticket sales, merch. You guys supported me directly. Imagine a musician putting out a fucking album and each track is its own NFT, you're going to see incredibly rich cunts want to collect every single track off the first two-pack album. That's going to happen. And I think that is so fucking cool. And that means that musicians, artists, comedians, you're going to see it happening. I started it. Remember, people selling jokes. I think that's so cool. Imagine owning Dreamworld, the Dreamworld joke. You know, the controversial joke that kind of got me ahead and made people go, look. Or owning the fucking world's biggest comedy special crowd fund. That's such a powerful thing. And I think that's where this shit is going to go. <coughs> and I'm all for it. And if you think that it's bullshit, guess what? You're right, but you're also dumb because everything is bullshit. Why do people pay? Why do people prefer a real Pokemon card to a good fake? Why? There's no difference. They both have the same shit on it. If it's a good fake, they both look the same. The only difference is that imaginary feeling we have in our brains of real. Nothing's real. They're both cards. They both look the same. They both do the same thing. If you were to play them in a tournament, if it's a good fake, it'd do the same shit. The only difference is, uh, it's fake. What's fake? Nothing. It's the same shit. You're going to see people, you're already seeing it. Uh, a fucking meme just sold. Like, pieces of internet history. Uh, the Nyan Cat. Remember that fucking thing? The Pop-Tart Cat. 8-bit song. $700,000 for a mill. $700,000. What's that worth? Nothing. It's not real. But it is because we decided it was and we gave it value. We all gave a fuck about for about three weeks on the internet. And someone wants to buy the memory of that and the bragging rights. Oh, remember? Yeah, I remember that. I own it. Why? Kind of rich. I don't know. I could afford it. And I wanted to tell you that I own it. Oh, that's cool. May I slob on the knob, please, sir? That's what it's about. 
So, buy my NFT. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a cool thing. I'm not, I don't, I don't think I'm going to make a lot of fucking money out of it. I just think it's a, it's a, it's a cool little, I wanted to experiment with it. You know what I'm like. I like something. I have to do it. Uh, it's crazy though. I know a few digital artists. I won't say names, but I've seen digital artists, like I'm in group chats with them, uh, just make millions of dollars. Like going from really successful online, but making fuck all money to overnight, literally becoming millionaires. Um, it's amazing. It's fucking cool. It's so, I'm jealous, but it's fucking cool. Um, and I think more, every, anything that gives more power to the artist, the creator is an incredible thing. Um, so I'm all for it. Guys, I'm sorry that this one is short. But I am very sick and I can feel myself flagging and I feel my voice starting to hurt. So in the interests of myself and preserving myself and trying to have a sick day, I am going to wrap it up there. Sorry, um, but I'll make it up to you uh, soon. I've been very sick to do with all of this. If you want a banger, longer episode, go listen to the very first episode in the new studio for Luke and Lewis. Uh, it comes out on Tuesday, 5 p.m. on YouTube. It'll come out earlier on audio uh, audio version. But I really, 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 if I can ask you to do anything, check that out on YouTube because the people we've partnered with have put a lot of money into us and we don't make any money for them yet. So check that out. We really want to make a splash. Share it, share clips, share the news. Please do help us out because we're super excited about it. It is a really, really, really good episode. Um, and, uh, look, I'll say when I start pulling out the pictures, the printed pictures, you'll see, uh, I think I've done something very funny and, uh, it could get me into trouble, but I think it's fucking hilarious. So check that out. Thank you. I'm sorry. This one was short. I will make it up to you and, uh, Patreon people. I've been sick. I'm going to get that Patreon episode up for you as well. Um, bear with me. Let me have my sick day. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon. NFTs are cool. Have a shit one. Bye.